This is Science for Success, the best soybean management practices by extension researchers from across the United States. Hello, my name is Sean Castill, extension soybean agronomist with Purdue University. Today we're going to be talking about soybean flowering. When we look at reproductive stages, and this is the beginning of reproductive stages, we have to start with the flower itself. And this initiation of flowering starts with critical photo period. You know, in other words, we hit critical night lengths in consecutive order. In doing this, we, we have a plant that's um, observing that night length and causing a switch in the plant to start the process of flowering. Now to see those flowers comes at another level whenever we've accumulated enough thermal energy or heat units and then we show it. So in other words, we can have the initiation of flower before our naked eye can see it. Now as the flower develops and is seen by the human eye, this is where we come into our reproductive staging. So in the case with the picture I have here, uh, this is R1, first bloom. And so this is where we have anywhere on the main stem uh, an open flower. Okay, at this, this position we go down, we have the cotyledons, uh, where the cotyledons, unifoliates, and now we go in the trifoliates and go to the second trifoliate. So in the picture here, we have an open flower in trifoliate node 2 and node 3. Uh, this is uh, called an R1. As we, we continue to go on from this stage, this can last maybe one to two, four or five days, depending on some of the weather conditions and certainly if we're going to be talking about uh, an indeterminate versus a determinate variety. Now as we advance to the second stage of this, this pairing of reproductive development flowering, uh, this is where we have open flowers up the main, main stem as we go through this and uh, now it's on the upper two positions. So as we go to the top, we have the terminal bud, upper node position one, upper node position two. Both in this case have an open flower, and so this would be classed as R2, or full bloom. At this stage, uh, we've accumulated usually about half of our uh, trifoliate nodes, and uh, at this point, so if we think we've counted up those nodes and we have 10, 10 nodes, and by the end of the season, we should have about 20. And so this is a nice uh, uh, check for us in the middle of the season how things are growing, how they're developing. Uh, again, as we advance with critical photo period, you know, not every plant is going to reach uh, this at the same stage. In other words, that same variety planted the last week of April or early May is going to reach this R1, R2 later, uh, or earlier, excuse me, than a later planted crop. So if we go to the first week of June, for instance, we've got this combination again of critical photo period or night length, as well as heat unit accumulation. So in this case, uh, the early May planted uh, bean here, this picture is uh, the middle of June, uh, probably really won't start flowering until late June, early July, depending on again how much uh, heat unit accumulation versus the early June picture is going to be the beans are going to continue to develop since the light quality, the photo period, and the night length and thermal energy and start flowering probably the middle of July. Uh, one example of this is uh, just happens to be one of the studies that I've done over the years here at Purdue, and so our northern location, this is hours of sunlight, when are we reaching these, these critical points? And so if we had a May 7th planet, uh, as we advance across, so May 7th, go to R1. Uh, in this case, it's about the first day or so of July with this data set. And then as you delay planting, this gets shifted down further and further away uh, from that, that first flowering period. Uh, first of, uh, week of June, uh, now we're going into the middle of July before we're seeing those first flowers and certainly as we push it later and later uh, we're going to have later development and flowering will occur later in the season. This, this is going to create this compression in terms of our overall flowering and reproductive development and so loss of a potential uh, yield there. One thing uh, when we talk about flowering of soybeans, we flower a lot and so in other words uh, we put out way more flowers than we realize to the point of pods and seed production and so in that we can lose as little as 20 percent. In more cases than not it's, it's higher than 50, 70, 80 percent of our flowers are, are boarded and so in that we lose a lot and so there's this concept of okay should we do something with that or is there anything that we can do to bring those to life or, and follow all the way through. 
the, the main story with this is that soybeans have an ability to adapt, and adapt from the loss of flowers and the loss of, of leaves for that matter. Here's a case where uh, we have 50% leaf defoliation in R1 first bloom, and uh, we'll track how quickly these plants recover. And so now, seven days later, how much of the leaves have come back. Uh, 16 days later, uh, so nearly you know, fully canopied uh, again two weeks after this R1. And R1, when this uh, defoliation event occurred, they had full canopy. And so within two weeks, they recovered from that leaf defoliation and certainly by a three week period, uh, fully canopied. And so leaf uh, loss at this stage has minimal impact on our yield loss. It's the same concept that we think about aborting flowers, has minimal effect on our, our yield. Um, yield loss maybe on something like this would be on the order of five or 10% yield loss. Now certainly you go at 100%, everything gets taken off, and then what is the recovery time? It's gonna take much longer for this plant to recover. Seven days later, two weeks later, three weeks. So three to four weeks after this 100% defoliation is about how long it's gonna to take to fully recover, get our canopy back. And in that, we certainly are gonna have some yield loss, maybe on the order of 25%, uh, give or take. So again, this concept that leaf loss earlier in the season, this R1 stage, um, has some effect, but not nearly as much as we go into our later reproductive stages. And so within this, we really wanna be maintaining the idea of when are we reaching R1? What can we do uh, so that first bloom to full bloom? What can we do to, to maximize canopy closure? quicken that or hasten that with timely planting and uh, narrow row spacings, and then follow that through with good scouting, good recommendations for management of a disease or insects. And then finally, to know this stage is critical for our weed control. If um, we're going R1, R2 applications, that is a, a point where a lot of our herbicides are, are going off label. So we don't want to go beyond that and cause us a, any undue harm or yield loss there. Science for Success is funded by the Soybean Checkoff.